Good morning, the word for you today. Today is Thursday, December 29th. I hope you had a great Christmas, um, and I hope that you have a blessed new year coming up. So uh, today our devotion is titled, Changing How You Pray. Our scripture passage comes out of the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 1, verse 16. So I'm going to read verse, um, starting in verse 15, which says, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. All right, so today we're talking about prayer. So, you know, we've talked about what is prayer, we've talked about what prayer does, why we pray, and so this one is changing how you pray. So I think that what this is getting at is going back to the motivation behind prayer. So I know for me, when I first converted, when I first became a Christian, prayer for me was very transactional. Um, you know, when you convert, a lot of the times you have the, you are under the impression that prayer is the method through which we receive salvation, and because of that, we, or I think I especially, tied it to the idea of Jesus on the cross paid for my sins. And so me praying is me asking for more transaction from him. Now, I don't think that was a right thing for me to do, but I think that's what I did. So for me, prayer was very transactional. But I love to think of prayer as relational. And here's what I mean by that. So. As we all know, I reference the Old Testament a lot, uh, probably more than anybody else does in the devotionals, uh, but it's because I love it, and I think that it has a great d uh, deal of wealth and information and wisdom. And so especially Jewish tradition. I love Jewish tradition. I think it is something that we should be incorporating into how we think about and critically, and critically understand the scriptures and the gospels. And so for me, when I think of prayer, I think of the Lord's Prayer. You know. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven, that whole piece. And so for me, that prayer is very clearly a model of prayer in the Jewish tradition. Here's what I mean by that. So there's this thing called the Amidah. The Amidah is a Jewish prayer that is said every day. It means standing. You have a weekday Amidah, a Shabbat Amidah, an Amidah for different holidays. Each of these are prayers that are said that specifically go with the liturgical calendar of the, Jewish, of the Jewish year. And so what's important about this is that these prayers do things like praising God, thanking God, petitioning God, asking God for healing, asking God for forgiveness, asking God for grace. The things that we think about in prayer. But the major difference between this Jewish concept of prayer and our concept of prayer is that theirs isn't so much tied to the prayers actually coming true. Here's what I mean by that. The Jewish people have faith in God. They believe that God is going to deliver them from oppression. We see this time and time again throughout the Old Testament. But the importance of it is that there is also an understanding that even if God doesn't deliver them in this life, in this moment, they are going to continue to worship God. They are going to continue to praise God because even if he doesn't deliver them out of this evil, he delivered them from previous evils. For them, prayer is not only a way to ask for a transaction with God. It's not only a way for them to request a, a gift, but it's also a way for them to say, hey, you gave me this and I'm going to write a thank you note and I'm going to write you another thank you note and another. It's very similar to whenever you receive a Christmas gift or a gift at like your wedding and you write hand, handwritten thank you notes to everybody and then you, then you question, did I thank them already? And so you may write a second one on accident and send that one. It's the same concept. They are, they are continually giving thanks. They are continually remembering the goodness and the graciousness that God gave them. And I think that's what Jesus pulled upon and I think that's what Paul's pulling upon here. Paul is seeing the blessing that, the, that this church of Ephesus has done in his life. 
Paul is seeing that these people have faith and love towards Jesus, and he sees the good that they are doing in the work of the Holy Spirit. And I think he's thanking God. And so when he prays and he incorporates the Ephesians into his prayers, he's not doing it in a way of saying, God, I'm, I'm transacting this. I'm paying you back for doing this. He's saying, hey, God, I know I've told you this already, but thank you for this. So when we think of prayer, I would challenge you, and I challenge myself to do this every day, and I'm not great at it, but I'm trying, to move away from that monetary value of prayer. Move away from that conception that says that praying is inserting that dollar bill into the vending machine and typing in the code to get the reward. And said move towards prayer as me saying, hey, thank you for that, I really appreciate it. And continuing to build a relationship between you and your Heavenly Father. Have a nice day.